You're listening to Creepy Unsolved. What is up guys, it's Lara here and we are back for another episode of Creepy Unsolved. Thanks for joining us. On this episode of Creepy Unsolved, our guest is our friend Lady Anne Celine. She is the owner of KPNL Paranormal Radio Station, an author, host of the Caravan of Lore podcast, and a lifelong experiencer. On this episode, we dive into her itinerary of a trip that she's taking to Ireland where many famous haunted locations will be visited. We also touch on some other travel stories and some of her first paranormal experiences. Before we begin, and while I have your attention, I want to invite you to visit our website, creepyunsolved.com. It is your one-stop shop for all our podcast episodes, YouTube videos, and Creepy Unsolved blog. Would you like to support the show? You can do so for just $2 a month for ad-free content, and that's less than the price of a cup of coffee. We also have a new Patreon tier that allows access to ad-free content and bonus content. Visit our Patreon link in the show notes below. And one last thing before we get started, if you have a story you would like to share with us or a future story suggestion, email us at creepyunsolvedmedia at gmail.com. Now with that all out of the way, let's begin. Yeah, like we graduated with probably 36 people. I remember being in like fifth, sixth grade and we had like closer to 80 because we had we had a telecommunication company called Adelphia in my hometown and they went through a huge lawsuit. The company disbanded, a bunch of people went to prison. And when I took a okay. in college, I actually like read about that company. It was crazy. I remember being in my house in town and like flipping on the news and they have like cameras, you know, journalists and like police officers and everything outside on this Mm -hmm. massive multi-million dollar building where I live is like really tiny because you can tell by my 36 class members (laughs) that I graduated with. Right. So it was like groundbreaking. And I came outside of my house and I looked down the street and I could see it. I'm like, holy shit, we're on TV. And it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it wasn't cool for everyone wow. who lost a bunch of money and their pensions right. and, you know, retirements and that, that shit sucked. But that oh, company, yeah. the owner used to own the Buffalo Sabres. He had a vision to turn my hometown into the next Pittsburgh. He, oh, wow. he was planning on scaling up so big. There's right. a mansion in our town that was never finished. And it's really oh, sad because wow. it, it was like a beautiful looking house, but mm. all that money went away. So it right. just ceased to exist. Wow, gosh. Yeah, see, I'm from a really small town as well. I mean, it always makes me feel really old when I sit there and go, yeah, I remember when the first stoplight was put in town. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Yeah, and our graduating class was really small. I mean, town is only about a mile long, if that. So. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we got two, three red lights, maybe. Oh, and wow. Like, yeah. Well, I guess, no, just two. So yeah, we have an intersection, and then we have one down the road. <laughs> it's it's crazy. It's it's yeah. a beautiful like mountaintop town in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. The convenience factor is straight out the window. Right. When I tell Laura I have to go grocery shopping, it's like a 45, 50 minute trip. <laughs> yes. No. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Same in, here. In any direction you go. Yep. If you want to hit a Walmart, you drive like 50 minutes in any direction <laughs> you hit one. What we have is the dollar store. And we're fortunate Mm -hmm. enough to have two of them on each side of town. And they're like the shittiest store ever. Like, I hate them. (laughs) The running joke around here, I don't know, probably most of the country, is just like random dollar stores popping up. Like Mm -hmm. every single town, they just have a random one popping up. And I remember driving down to Waynesboro, and we're out in the middle of nowhere. Like, middle of fucking nowhere. Like, farm field Mm -hmm. nowhere. And there's just a random dollar store sitting there. You could upgrade to like a Walmart at least to be a little bit better, but. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. Yeah, they've been doing that around here too, just in towns that are kind of far away from the grocery stores. It's like, hmm, let's put a dollar store here. Get your milk, eggs, and bread here. You like your Easy Mac and your everyday essential <laughs> products. And yeah. Yep. With, filled with horrible stuff for you. Mm hmm. Yeah. 
we, you know, we come from small towns and now Lady Anne, you're traveling the world and you're heading to <laughs> Ireland, right? I am. Oh my gosh. It's, it's incredible. I mean, I still have to sit there and kind of pinch myself and be like, am I really doing this? Is this actually happening? It's the first time that I've ever left the States and uh, definitely the, you know, the furthest I've ever been away from home. It's crazy. Like I, I was fortunate enough when I served in the army to go to Korea and I made a oh, quick wow. pit stop in Japan so I can, you know, I can say I visited both of them places. It's so nice to get out of the United States and to experience mm. like different cultures and different parts of the world that, you know, many people never even get to imagine visiting. Oh, yeah. But before we jump into your upcoming trip, you know, do you want to take a moment? Just tell us a little bit about you. For those who are not familiar with Lady Anne, you know, what you're about, what kind of stuff you're into. Sure. And, yeah. yeah, of course. Um, gosh, you know, so I guess I could start out with the fact that I just wrote a book and which was absolutely incredible because writing has been something that I have wanted to do since I was six years old. I remember being that little kid in my grandpa's basement and I found his typewriter and I would just type away on that thing and, and I always thought, oh, I want to, you know, I want to author books and, it, you know, I've been an experiencer of the paranormal since my earliest memory. So, of course, you know, the book that I came out with was, it, it's kind of um, a journal, a diary, if you will, that follows every kind of uh, strange occurrence that I've had in my life. Um, it started out as a thing that I was just kind of writing for my children to leave behind because it seemed that as I went through life and as I did, you know, because I became my family's genealogist as well, uh, we have a long line of adoptions on my maternal side. And it seemed that there might have been something that was being passed on on the maternal side into the women in our family. So I thought, you know, I think that just in case it would be nice to to write everything out from day one up to the current point especially you know because we're not promised tomorrow we never know what's going to happen and so i wanted to leave that behind for them well you know one of my my very first memories was i was only about a year old and my father had taken me to the babysitters there was this big beautiful sliding glass door and out this window, you could see just this vast farm fields and it was flooded and it was early morning. So the sun was rising and there was those brilliant oranges and pinks and yellows. And as I looked on this scene, I thought, wow, I came back. And it was just, and, and that's always stayed with me. And it's something that, you know, I, I, I just knew, I knew that uh, reincarnation uh, was a thing. And even as I grew, I had these reoccurring dreams and I knew that, you know, like in one of them, I was this soldier and it was so real. You know, I remember entering this room and the, there was a bed over on the right side of the room and in the middle there was a table and then right in front there was this window and I remember looking out and there was, it was just absolute destruction. Well, as I stood there in this empty room, the door flies open behind me and I get shot in the back and I could feel it. Every single time I had this dream, it was wow. so real and I could feel it. So I, I drop to the ground and I think to myself, okay, I'm going to just try to crawl to the table because the table had this uh, tablecloth on it. And I thought, I'll, I'll pretend that I'm dead and I'll lay here until they're gone. They'll think that they got me. But I actually end up dying. I didn't make it. so, you know. I've so there's never been a time in my life where I didn't believe that, uh, you know, that reincarnation wasn't a thing, and that is why, with my book, I ended up using Aperture in the Veil, and you know, Aperture. If you think of the the camera, the opening on a camera, my mm. my parents were photographers. So, you know, because I wanted to use a more antiquated word rather than, you know, something fancier than just opening in the veil. <laughs> because it's said that when we come here, we are born into this great forgetting. So we don't remember, you know, generally, we don't remember our past lives. We don't remember that we've been here before. But what would happen if there was that opening in the veil where we pass through it, then we would retain some of these memories. And then with born in a preternatural world, a lot of people ask me, well, what is preternatural? Why did you choose that? 
preternatural, instead of using like supernatural or paranormal, it shows that all this stuff that is happening in our world that we experience in those categories is actually very normal to our world. Because if you think about it, the human eye doesn't see everything that is going on around it. The ears don't hear everything that is going on around it. So, and you know, when you, when you're in this community and you hear these stories and especially when you're, when you're coming out and you're saying, well, I experienced this. And then, you know, cause I'll never forget my very first podcast that I was on after I told my stories, I had messages from people all over the world. I remember somebody messaged me from New Zealand and they said, I've experienced this too. I've seen this too. And it was, it was such a big moment. And as I have, you know, continued on, I've realized, you know, this stuff is actually very normal in our world. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And it's, it's awesome to have platforms like podcasts and YouTubes to, you know, have people share their experiences and, you build mm-hmm. a whole network and you connect and you talk to like-minded people and experiencers and it's a beautiful thing really now i wanted to jump back into your dream about being a soldier mm-hmm. now were you able to you know you talked about genealogy and being mm-hmm. your family's keeper were you able to like pinpoint you know who that was that you were in a previous life or anything like that I do not believe that this individual was in my uh, genetic, you know, in my bloodline. I think that I was incarnated into another bloodline. Um, I don't even know what war it was because the memory, everything is um, like when I when I sit and try to remember and look out the window, the buildings are they're like a gray color and like a gray brick or stone. And I mean, everything is just in utter destruction there's i mean the buildings are crumbling and the sky is gray as well so i can't even recognize where this would be as for my uniform um there again too it it seemed to be i mean all the colors were very muted um i would say it was like a, a gray but maybe like a gray green type of a um a uniform i don't remember wearing any kind of hat or helmet on my head so I I really I really haven't figured out much about that but I had it so many times you know it's yeah it's such an interesting thing like I kind of have similar experiences not not to that aspect though but Mm -hmm. probably back I remember telling Laura about this I don't remember if it's earlier in this year or late last year I was going through like a series of dreams. I'd keep dreaming mm-hmm. that it was someone else. Like every night oh, I'd be wow. someone else and like I'd be living their life while I was asleep. And I don't I don't know if that's I don't I don't think there's mm-hmm. any connection to, you know, that actually being someone else's life or whatever I'm living it. Right. Because like what terrifies me is the thought of waking up and being someone else and having oh. like no connection to your previous life. So I think A lot of that was brought on from like a personal fear that maybe I was, Mm -hmm. you know, thinking about at the time. And then I was living out some thoughts in my dream, but it was so like vivid and it felt so freaking real. Like I was right there. Oh, yeah. I was that person. I was living like their day to day life, like nothing right out of the ordinary happened. Like there was no, no deaths or no like Mm -hmm. life changing moments that happened. It was just like bland, just normal day to day activities. It's so interesting, dreams and thoughts and connections you make. I've been talking to a friend about uh, spirit guides lately. She knows that friend. She's friends with her. You could use her name. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was talking to Cisco about spirit <laughs> oh, guides. Yeah. and I love her. Yeah. Um, just, <laughs> We're all just, <laughs> just trying to connect with them and connect mm-hmm. with, expand my thoughts and dreaming. And I haven't dreamed in like a long time. The other night I spoke to them. I talked to them. And I had like the most vivid freaking dream after, you know, I, I asked for it. Oh, wow. But like I, mm. when I woke up, it was still there. I'll see it in like my peripheral. Like when I think of thoughts and memories and stuff, it's like in my peripheral vision. It's weird how it works, but I couldn't fathom like what exactly it was about. So I've been practicing trying to mm. remember. Right. Possible gateways that dreams open and connections to the past life or premonitions oh, yeah. and stuff like that. It's, it's awesome. It really is. You know, it, it's 
It's so interesting that you bring that up because I I don't know if you guys have seen my posts on Facebook, but occasionally I will post a dream that I had. And for the first time, I had this one dream and I and I didn't understand it. I was sitting there thinking, "Okay, this this isn't me, but I'm experiencing it like it's me." And I was really confused and I actually never thought about living or seeing something through somebody else's eyes but in this dream it was really I, I mean this is really weird um I had a series of military dreams and this was this was recent earlier this year and in this particular one we were I was in this uniform and I had never seen this uniform before and we were supposed to do a drill we were it was we were gonna get into an aircraft and it, it was just it's hard because it's hard to remember because now it's been so long since I've had it. But when I went to go look at the uniform, I did find it online and it was actually a Russian special forces uniform. And the eerie thing was, is this was in January, right before everything happened in February. Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, it was weird. It was weird for sure, and that was the first time that I started talking with other people about, you know, kind of in a dream looking through somebody else's eyes. But but there again, you know, this is, of course, a, a whole new rabbit hole to go research down because why would you have that connection with that person? Were they awake at the yep. time? Were right. they asleep at the time? You know, so it's... Or it's fascinating. Were you getting something in the future, some somebody else's stuff, and you were picking right. up on that? Exactly. Yeah, there, yeah. I, I feel like there definitely has to be connection with dreams and stuff. There, there's such a big part of your life, if you really think about it, that's like, you know, normal people, they sleep eight hours a night, I, I get a little less. Mm -hmm. But like, just studying the thoughts and, uh, you know, the stories behind dreams, it's something to really tap into. Because, you know, oh, yeah. just the feelings and the emotions and what you can learn from them and possible connections with other people. And I thought, you know, with lucid dreaming and building your awareness with being in your dreams and being able to mm -hmm. make different things happen. Like I was saying today, I'm like, how cool would it be to figure out how to like write for my podcast or to edit for my podcast while I was asleep? And once I yeah. figure that out, I'm going to, I'm going to patent <laughs> that shit. I wish I could freaking one. edit in my sleep. Oh my <laughs> God. That would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah. I've had so many dreams where not not recently and I'm not really sure why, but maybe 10 years ago and even teenage and younger years that I've had dreams where I've dreamt something and it was like something when I woke up I was like that was an important dream and then months down the road, weeks down the road, even a year or so down the road, exactly what I dreamt happened. And oh, I don't wow. have any explanation for it. Dude, I'll tell you right. a couple more dream stories and then we'll jump into Ireland. So I've been <laughs> I've been talking to a friend that has another podcast and you know, she was we we're talking about dreams and about like uh hyperfantasia and aphantasia and prophantasia and all this different it, it's just basic how you how you think and how you project thoughts and different yeah. stuff like that like if you know what hyperfantasia is you i was really just gonna vivid, say really no clue what thought. that means Same. So, <laughs> okay at least i'm not the only one <laughs> so i got on this topic from a tiktok that my wife showed me or we were talking about and she's like did you know some people can't envision thoughts so when they think of something if they when they close their eyes and you think of like a memory or an object or you know, whatever it may be, it's just, it's darkness. They don't see anything. They, they don't have like, uh, in a, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure they have an imagination, but they can't project thoughts as like a object, as vision. So if you're aphantasia, it's just darkness, whatever you think. There's people that work for like Pixar and Disney and like Universal Studios and stuff, and they're aphantasia, but they're amazing like graphic designers and storytellers and stuff like that. Then you have hyperfantasia, where you have the most vivid, descriptive, visionary thought. When you think of an apple, you see like a crisp red apple. You don't just see like a drawing. You see like every detail, like whatever it may be. When you think of like a memory, you can close your eyes and play like a movie. Then you have prophantasia, where you can project your thoughts out. You're just looking at something right now. You have almost like a film over your vision, like... If you think of opacity oh, yes. and like you turn it down really low, it, but you, you can see it, but you can see through it. They can like project their memories oh, wow. or thoughts out here. 
or they can look at a wall and they can like see an object built on it. Like, I've been reading about it and I think I'm more pro Fantasia. Like I was saying with my peripheral, I can see like, I can see the thoughts, I can see the memories. You know, when I when I talk and I think about something, you'll see me staring yes. off into space because I can I can see it. So that's awesome. Me too. We, we got talking about that. We got talking about you know spirit gods. We got talking about uh, you know dreams, and this is back into the dream thing. And then we were talking about lucid dreams, and sh- she was saying that she taught herself to lucid dream when she was young because she'd have like horrible nightmares, and she had to teach herself that you know these aren't real. Mm-hmm. So I remember when I was a young like seven eight years old it went on for probably a year i could dream of a clock and i could watch the freaking you know the arms on the clock spin around circles and i could stop it at a certain time and when i woke up it'd be that time and it was the coolest fucking shit oh, ever wow like to the minute wow. like it was nuts that's, and like that's cool i don't remember how long it lasted but it felt like it was a good year then it just went away during that time right. it was the coolest shit ever like I'd think of like 9.36 a.m. and I'd open my eyes, it'd be 9.36 a.m. or 10.30 and so on and so on. It was pretty sweet. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. Wow. Like, just, I don't know if it's just a random thing happening or like I had a, an internal clock because if you wake up at the same time every day, you know, right? your body gets in tune to that. But just to like pick different times and to have it stop on that dot, you wake, open up, oh, yeah. open up your eyes, you wake up and then it's that time. But I don't know if you guys have experienced anything like that. I'm going to say, what uh, if you... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please. No, please. No, I was just going to say almost like, what if you were kind of like in an astral projection, projection, I can't talk again, state, and you were like seeing your clock and not realizing it or something like that? That'd be sweet. I, I don't think yeah. I had a time... Or I don't think I had a clock like in my bedroom or like an alarm clock or anything like that at the time. Oh, you, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm thinking. Like, I'm picturing you like in bed, waking up, rolling over, and looking at your alarm no, clock. No, no. Okay. I, I was, I was like eight years old. I had a bunk bed. I didn't oh. have a, I didn't have a uh-huh. clock. But gotcha. I mean, I would wake up knowing what time it was, but like, because I would get up in the middle of the night and I'd go get a glass of water or something like that. Yeah. And I would pass by the clock and I would see that it was exactly the time that I just internally knew that it was. And that was yeah. always really interesting. My mom is so good at that. My entire life, you know, we'd be outside doing yard work or she'd go out by the pool or something and she'd be like, what time is it? About 3.30? And she's mm. like on the freaking <laughs> dot, like her whole mm-hmm. life. I'm like, how do you do this shit? It's crazy. <laughs> she just did it right. the other day when I saw her. I'm like, what? Aww, crazy. That's cool. Yeah. I guess you'd always be on time if you have that good of perception of time. <laughs> I don't take no, after my mother. There's no excuse there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to Ireland. What are we seeing in Ireland? Let's talk oh about my the tour. Gosh. What, what's all on this trip that you're going on? Yes. So, gosh, we are going to the Seafin Passage Tombs. That is uh, right off the bat, which they're like 5,000 years old. There were no, from the research that I've done, there was no bodies or anything uh, buried there, but it is an ancient ceremonial site. And so that's right off the bat. From there, we will go to, I think it's, it's the highest cross that's in Ireland, and I think it's called the Moon. And then we are, and this is all on day one, <laughs> and then we are going to... And, I might botch some of these words, but... Uh, oh, the names Castle. are... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I hope maybe she knows how to say these because I'm going to butcher them. <laughs> no, exactly. It's it's definitely one of those things where it's just like, uh, I- I'm going to try. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, then Kilkenny Castle, which it was... Gosh, I think it was built... It's got to be... Okay, which day I is this? Remember. I got all these links and I got like 10 tabs <laughs> open up. No lie. Because so I was this, researching this right. all today. No, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've got them open too. Okay. So this is still... We're still on day one. Oh my God. Can I just so. say that I'm going through this and I'm getting so excited and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not going. <laughs> this sucks. I'm going to have to go on the next trip. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely going to be me more after this for sure. And I'm Mm -hmm. just, you know, it's one of those things here again, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I was just talking about this with someone over a year ago, I had wanted to go to Ireland and I wanted to go so bad, but here I thought, gosh, you know, it just seems like a dream. But let me tell you, like I named one of the chapters in my book, Manifestation, 
The power of the mind, the energy that we hold, if you really want something, I really believe that we have the ability to manifest our reality and the things that we want, we can really pull them to us because here again, for a long time, I I just didn't think that uh, I'd ever really leave the United States. I didn't really think that I would travel. I didn't even really think that I'd fly to any other states. And here I've been to Colorado, Ohio, Arkansas, Texas, and, and everything. And it's just been... I mean, I'm still in awe. I'm still, I mean, here I am. I'm, it's, it's happening this month, just in a couple weeks. And I'm still kind of going, is it, is this really happening? <laughs> <laughs> so on day two, going to the Rock of Cashel, which is also known as St. Patrick's Rock. And then, gosh, I mean, we've got Cahir Castle is after that. And then... Uh, the Blarney Stone, you know, uh, where people go and they'll they'll kiss the stone to get the gift of gab. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you for a hot second because I mm-hmm. saw a TikTok or something and I'm pretty yes. sure this was it. If you are you're laughing, you know what I'm going to say, where the locals pee on it and then all these tourists yep. are going up there. They pee oh on it God. like out yep. at night after they've been at the bars and everything. And then the next day, you know, when it's sun's out people are visiting this they're going up there kissing right? this rock. <laughs> dude i'd be sitting back laughing at everyone that's kissing the stone on the tour that's oh yeah no. i heard about you, that you're not gonna a long kiss it right ago. no <laughs> <laughs> you know honestly i think that uh, i think i've got the gift of gab already i mean i am scottish <laughs> and irish i don't need to be <laughs> i'm not gonna kiss any stones we're good there that's for um <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and then, I mean, I- I'll tell you, I'm going to skip uh, through this a little bit and-, and mention that I'm one of the highlights. The place that I'm really looking forward to the most is Spike Island Prison. That one really stands out uh, to me because it seems like there's something that happens the second that the universe is like, okay, this is happening. Because I begin to have visions from certain places and it was spike island that spoke to me the most out of every single place on this list this was the place and it started off with there was these there were shoes and i knew that it was a woman and she was in a you know i could see the bottom of her skirt and i could see her shoes and it seemed like her feet her toes were you know barely on the ground and and you knew that she was she was being hung for something after i saw her then i saw this little boy that ran by which i thought was really strange and then off in the distance where and this is in like a courtyard or something and then off in the distance there's this hallway and there was this this figure and this is all in my mind this is something that i'm seeing in my mind there's a man standing in the hallway, but you can barely see him. It's like he's just a shadow entity, but you know that this is a man. And I was really perplexed by this, and I didn't really want to research uh, Spike Island because I wanted to allow for whatever connections and stuff to, to come through. And then that's the other thing, too, with having, I mean, it's still weird to say having psychic abilities or or whatever you know it's 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 still so fascinating i don't think there will be a time in my life where i see something and then it's confirmed that i'm not just surprised like it happened for the very first time so i actually called my sister because my sister's going with me and i said okay these this is what i'm seeing in regards to spike island can you do me a favor and can you research was there any were there women there were there children and and were there French prisoners there? Because I thought that the woman was French, and it, she indeed did find information that all of those people were there. There was a children's ward that there were chains, and they had these hammocks that would be hooked up, you know, one after the other, and you'd have to climb up the chains to get in your little hammock for when you were going to bed. So that was really really fascinating and it's and it's come to me a couple different times so i'm really fascinated for that event yeah i looked into you know spike island the prison a little bit before this and Mm -hmm. they're comparing it to like alcatraz but like a thousand times i guess worse more haunted right 
Yeah, no, and and again, it's one of those places I haven't, I really haven't looked into too much because I wanted to kind of have that clear, you know, clean slate. That way, things can just kind of come to me, and then because recently, for instance, only when I went to Texas, I had the Alamo, and what was really interesting is on my so when I first booked my my trip. There was this woman that came to me, but she didn't really say anything. It was just, you could just see her and she was there and she looked like she was mourning. And that was all I got. Nothing else came until my second flight. And I went to close my eyes. I always sleep on the plane. And she came to me again. And here again, you could tell that she was mourning, but then but then she wasn't and, and she seemed happy. She seemed like she was going about her normal, you know, daily life. And I was like, okay, I really need to, to look into this and see, you know, were there women there? Was there anybody that stood out more than most? So I get to the Alamo and I'm looking around and they're talking about the soldiers, the men and everything. And I didn't see any pictures of women and I didn't really hear anything. And I asked somebody who was, and this was at the very end of taking the tour there. I asked him, I says, um, is there, are there any women that stood out more than most, uh, that had a big influence with this not because there was a woman that saved the like she saved the alamo and and put funding into being able to keep it and and you had to preserve it right and but but i wasn't meaning her this is this is somebody from that time and he told me that there was a woman who stood out and i can't remember her name but there was a woman who would play her, you know, reenact her. And he told me where to find her. So boom, you know, I go over to her and I was just like, hi, um, do you, do you reenact as, as this woman? And she goes, uh, actually, yes, I do. And I was like, I was, I was just curious if you could, if you could tell me more about her, um, you know, and she talked about how she was kind of like, she was a princess. She was, she was rich and she, had two husbands and and they had died she had been a widow twice she had this 11 month old baby that was there and he when he grew and he was older he was the last known survivor from the alamo and during this conversation it was so crazy because she looks at me and she just stops and she goes why her why do you want to know about her well I'm still nervous about telling random people, well, I had a dream, yeah, naturally. you know, <laughs> and so I'm just, I, I, I'm on the spot and I'm staring at her and I'm like, uh, well, see, I, I had this dream and, and this is what she looked like and this is what it felt like. And there was almost this, um, transformation that place where it was like that moved through this woman and she started talking about how when she first came there to do this reenacting this woman it was like she channeled her and when she reenacts her she's actually channeling her and then how she's spoken to her and how this woman was like tell my story tell my story and i mean of course you know then if I, i'm i'm struck with emotion and and i'm brought to tears because of course this is you know it's moving for her it's moving for me it's confirmation that what i saw was actually something that was legitimate and and it was you know it was incredible so having those moments are they're so impactful and that's why yeah that's why i don't like to do a whole lot of research on a place before i go there was another instance when i went to ohio they didn't tell me where we were going. I had no idea what the building was. And when I had landed and I met them and we were talking in the kitchen, I had a vision again of a location within a building. And I was like, you know, do you have a, a pen and paper? Can I can I write something down or draw something? So I start drawing this out and it's it's like a ramp with a, the railing and and I'm drawing this out and I'm telling them the colors and I'm, you know, pointing to, to the room that it's going into and and their their jaws just kind of dropped and they're like wow you know wait wait until you see this wait until you see and i'm like this is real <laughs> like this really exists and they were like yeah yeah you know just wait and it was incredible because i when i had drawn it out i even said you know i feel like that there's a presence right here at the end of this hallway so when we got there i mean i was stunned to stand in that area that I had drawn and so we actually set up some equipment like the the motion activated cat balls 
you know, mm -hmm. and we, we set them up down there where I said that I had felt something and we asked questions and it actually, there was a response. There was actually activity there in, in that location. So it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now having these two events happen to you, has it like jogged your memory to, or made you want to go back and think about other events that may have been similar but you didn't really put two and two together at the time have you found anything like that you know it's made me i mean as as i've grown up i have definitely looked but i mean especially when i was writing my book and i was telling these different stories there was these moments where i was like oh my gosh that was actually you know foresight that was actually these abilities that it wasn't you know it, it wasn't coincidence it wasn't you know, um, and then, of course, reviewing back in the past as well, I can see, oh, this is why this happened. This, you know, all of this was actually set up, you know, so. Now, have you wrote about a lot of them in your books? Do you want to share some of them? With the stories that I wrote in my book, one of my one of the biggest things was right in the beginning, my very first occurrence where something like this had happened. And. I was, gosh, how old was I? I want to say I was 10 or so. And my father and I, so my father, he was a postcard dealer. And so we would travel all over the Pacific Northwest with his postcards and he, you know, buying and selling and setting up at these shows and everything. And so we had the long drive up to Spokane down here from Portland. So it's like for uh, five hours maybe or so. It's a long time for a 10 year old especially in summer when you have no air conditioning in this little Ford Ranger. That's a so... long time for anybody, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Well, we're going up and I'm and I I'm tired. It's in the morning. It, it's not too hot yet. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to try to, you know, go to sleep for a little bit longer until we get there. Well, I remembered this movie. I could see the scene in a movie. It was from Fly Away Home and in the very opening scene of this movie, there's a little girl and she was with her mom and they got into a car wreck. The mom didn't make it, but she did. And I'm and I'm sitting there and I don't understand. I'm like, I don't want to think about this. I, I don't I don't want to think about this. I'm in the car with my dad. This is you know. So I sit up because you know I'm I'm you know just trying to get my mind off of it and I'm gonna think about other things. But the thing was, as soon as I opened my eyes and I sat up. There was an explosion, like it, it, it sounded like a gunshot. And what had happened is the, the tread came off of the tire it completely just. And so in the little Ford Ranger, um, it rolled over twice. And um, my dad had, you know, put himself over me. And yeah, I just remember it going black. And, and luckily, we actually landed right up. We, we landed on all four tires. And the only thing that I ended up getting was this little scar on the back of my uh, back of my hand. I only needed two stitches. That was it. And um, but I was in major shock. I was in major shock, and they had to oh, no pull doubt. me out of the window. Yeah. And wow. You know, because it, not only was it shock that that happened, but then there was the shock of the fact that I was thinking about that right beforehand, and then I had guilt. I I sat there and I thought. Should I have told him that I was sick, like car sick or something, and had him pull over? Is you mm -hmm. know maybe maybe if we would have gotten back on the road, but at a slower pace, then you know. So I, I it was really um, difficult to um, to process that. But then you know, in other podcasts, I've been asked about that because it could. It, it, I don't know if you want to call it a near near death experience. I mean, I got lucky. So it's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, and since then, you know, because a lot of the time they say sometimes when you have an experience like that, it also opens you up. To yeah, where I've you heard have. that a bunch, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I have a friend that that's true for. Right. And how was your dad, too? You oh, know? if he, so if he wouldn't, if I wouldn't have been in the car and he wouldn't have leaned down to lay over me, the section right there where his head is, that was all caved in. He, Holy he, shit, He dude. wouldn't be here. That's wow. insane. So it, it's almost more of a blessing that you were there Yes. than anything, the way I take it. Yeah. No, so yeah, I no. Look at it. I can, I can definitely understand, like, 
almost like the survivor's guilt. Right. With, you know, having that dream beforehand and, mm-hmm. you know, that happening. But, like, how would you, you know, have known, you know, but when you're oh, yeah. 10 and you're thinking about it, you know, obviously you're in a different state of mind, but mm-hmm. wow. That's like some final destination shit right there. <laughs> it is, though. It really is. It and it's just is. been incredible. Yeah. I mean, ever since with uh, with all of that, it's, you know, it's so, but then you get nervous as you kind of go through life experiencing these things because you can't just jump to the, co- the conclusion of, oh, because I'm thinking this, it's going to happen. We all worry. But everything we worry about isn't going to be, you know, isn't going to happen. And so learning discernment can be a little tricky when with all of that. Yes, definitely. And then again, learning forgiveness, which, you know, of course, (laughs) brings me, you know, into one of my one of my beliefs is that we are here, you know, that the soul incarnates here to learn unconditional love and forgiveness. And so, you know, I think that there's a lot of things that we experience in this life that, I mean, they're all lessons to ultimately achieve that. Yeah, definitely. You know, life's a guide. It's a lesson. I, what Mm -hmm. I like to think is, you know, I'm, I'm close to reincarnation. I think, you know, that's definitely Mm -hmm. a possibility. And like every reoccurrence of life is a new lesson you learn. And I don't know what the, the ending is, but I think with every, if we are being reincarnated with every lifetime, there's a new new lesson Mm -hmm. a new new story to be told a new something to learn something to believe to take on next and next and they sometimes say like if you had a really you're really bad person you come back and you struggle the next lifetime and so on until you you learn it like a balance with the universe or something Mm -hmm. exactly i agree now i was gonna chime in when you're talking about your story i did have a strange occurrence the other day i was telling laura about it when You know, I rode my motorcycle to work, and the whole morning leading up to that, freaking my neck and my shoulders and my joints just freaking ache. Sent me a text message. You're like, I feel like shit. And I'm like, are you getting sick? Didn't you say, like, I don't think so or something? Uh, I felt fine, like, I don't know, like, I didn't didn't feel like I had a cold or, like, a sickness coming on. Just, like, my joints ache. So, like, I go home every day for long. I hop to my motorcycle. There is, like, a grocery store next to the hospital. It's, like, 45 mile per hour through there. And I've watched people pull out of this freaking parking lot, like, idiots and almost Mm. sideswipe people and T-bone people. Like, and it's, like, the oddest thing ever because, like, where you turn out of, there's no blind spots. You can see all oncoming traffic. It's just, like, people go stupid pulling out of this parking lot. Uh So, I'm coming through and, you know, I'm going 45. There's... There was a car in front of me, and then there was an SUV pulling out of that parking lot. I'm coming, and, like, he fucking darts out in front of me, and I lock my brakes up, going, like, 45, 50 miles an hour. And there's, like, a truck right here that it cut off, too, and he's, like, yelling at the, the car as it pulled out because they see me coming at it. Um. And I found out that day my brakes worked. Freaking, it was nuts, though, because, like, I stopped. I was fine and everything, but all that, like, heavy, the, the aches and the joints and all that just went away after that so i don't know if it was wow. like, a, like a sign that something was going to happen or if it just scared right. all the pain out of me i think it just scared all the shit out of me but like it, <laughs> wow like it was it was something else like i've had other experiences like that before but not where it was almost like a life or death situation like that right but that's yeah, incredible listen, listen to the signs man i got one here that i can actually kind of tie into your trip here i was doing you know, my stalking your itinerary. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And um, there's one you're going to, and I, I'm going to butcher this. It's like, it's Char, Charles, Charlesville Castle. I keep calling it Charlesville Castle. Yeah. Yeah. There's no S in it though. (laughs) (laughs) Charlesville sounds good to me though. Someone's going to be like, that's not how you say it. But it's in an Irish village of Oh, I don't even know why I said this because I can't say this either. Tullamore. Tol- oh, okay. Yeah. And there's the castle gardens. And outside in the castle gardens, they have this 900 year old oak tree. And they call it the King Oak. And I guess this was in the 1900s. This, the Burry family 
was had some kind of weird connection to this tree and every time a branch fell off a couple days later a family member would die and then in 1963 lightning struck this tree nearly split it in half and then a few days later the head of the family i can't say his name either it's like (laughs) it it looks like colonel but i don't think that's what it is charles Mm -hmm. howard Bury, the head of the family, he died a few days later and they don't know what the cause was. And now, you know, I don't know if this is all true. I only got it off of one website. I didn't dig any deeper, but that's kind of, that kind of ties into what we're talking about. I thought that was pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, there's so much because I've been trying to do research on it. I've been making like a a paper on it and I've only made it to about day, let's see here. No, I'm at day three. <laughs> oh I mean, I've, yeah, I've done a little bit with day four because I was doing some research on the uh, Choctaw Native American site where there's a like a monument of feathers because the Native Americans had donated a bunch of money to the Irish people during mm-hmm. the famine. And there was that they, you know, they ended up having that kinship and it's continued into today. Wow. Uh, that's so, cool. It really is. It, it's it's amazing. And so I kind of skipped. I, I did half of day three, you know, all up to half of day three. And then I did that one thing on day four. And then I just haven't, uh, I haven't jumped into anything else because, <laughs> of course, you know, along with, with Ireland, I've also been researching. There's some, there's some connections between Ireland and Egypt. And Egypt is also somewhere that I'm really wanting to go. There's another tour that is that Mike Ricksicker is also putting on in February that it actually goes to Egypt. It's really interesting because there is a place, it's Newgrange, and that's in Ireland. And there's these spirals that are carved into the stone. And when you go and you look at stuff over in ancient Egypt and you see there's also, I mean, there's, I think, where is it? There's another, there's another location. Of course, I can't remember where it is, but throughout the world in ancient places, there's these spirals that are carved into these ancient locations. And I believe that they represent energy. And then, of course, you jump down the rabbit hole of going into like portals and, and, you know, like ley lines and stuff. Yes, yeah. Exactly. That's <laughs> exactly. really neat. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I end up kind of jumping all over the place where I'm, you know, yeah. super into this. And then all of a sudden there's this one little puzzle piece <laughs> that, you know, connects me to this whole other subject. And then I, you know, I go, go off on while. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That would be me. <laughs> Definitely. Like chasing breadcrumbs and stuff like you'd be a mad. Oh, yeah. It's crazy where you end up sometimes just one <laughs> yeah. link after another one Reddit page leads to this and this and that. <laughs> Right, and then you forgot where you even started. You're like, exactly. how did I get here? Like that on YouTube too. You'll watch one video and then like similar video, and you click on that, then you forget oh, yeah. where you even start. Like it's crazy. I feel so bad because there's times where I'll be doing a podcast, and all of a sudden I just I throw out this chunk of information where it's pieces of different research. Uh, you know pools if you will and the host will will kind of stop and be like hold on hold on that's a lot to unpack here (laughs) oh my goodness and i feel so bad because you know it's i told somebody today i was kind of laughing about it i was like you know those uh you see on on tv where people go into like vegas or something and there's the money you 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 walk in it's like this tornado of money and you have to try to catch the dollars. Yep. Well, that's my brain. <laughs> and that's all the ideas, you know, and all the different research. So I'm constantly, like, just trying to grab what I can. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> that's like a lot of our episodes. It's like a pinball machine. It's like yeah. <laughs> bouncing off conversation to conversation it. and just wherever we end up is where we end up. I like exactly. it, though, because it's just more like just laid back mm-hmm. and you know whatever comes out of it comes out of it because i'm like oh, oh i should have yeah. done more research on this and i was like nah we're good we could talk <laughs> for a few hours i'm sure of whatever oh. comes out so yeah but, well, uh, it makes it an adventure <laughs> I, I remember when we first started we, we like wrote down questions and stuff and really yeah. really dove in like we do dive into like some background research about our guests obviously and yeah you know their their content or their trips or 
the books they wrote or the podcasts they're involved in. Right. We used to like have like 20 questions on there. And like it, it kills the conversation when you're getting like mm. beat to death question after question. It's it's so much better just having the floor and you, you just talk to whatever and right. so let your mind go wherever you want it to go. Oh, yeah. Well, and the really cool thing about that, too, is it's it's kind of universe led as well because you're really there there's that flow and then usually by the end of it it's like oh my gosh the universe threw this in or threw that in and and this is exactly what was supposed to happen and and it's it's incredible most definitely well that's about it for this one lady ann but i want to no, give you some it's time. over already <laughs> man this hour the hour flew by i'm telling you oh my god it really like did 20 minutes this was right? like one, one of the fastest episodes in a while like it, yeah literally wow. so, so smooth dude so smooth i had so much fun i loved it <laughs> but i i do want to give you time to talk about i know you're involved in so much stuff you're you're a published <laughs> author you're a podcast host you have a radio station you know, the whole nine yards. So I do want to give you a moment to talk about, you know, all your awesome content, where we can find it, how the listeners can tune in and listen to all your stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, my podcast is called The Caravan Library of Lore. Uh, Currently, because I have so much going on, I have moved the caravan to be seasonal, where we premiere, you know, the 1st of October, and then we go until the last day in December. Um, You know, so... The Caravan, gosh, you can find it. You can type in the Caravan of Lore or the Caravan Library of Lore in Google, and that's the first thing that'll come up. Uh, Same with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Caravan of Lore. And we, you know, go over all kinds of stuff. We interview people just like you do, very similar, you know. And then with KPNL, that is a paranormal digital broadcasting station that plays paranormal podcasts after 5 p.m. Monday through Friday with special programming on Saturdays and Sundays. Sundays is old time radio, which I always have a lot of fun with. We also have paranormal, uh, well, it's music with a paranormal theme. So you can hear songs that talk about ghosts and demons and witches and, you know, all of that. And that's that's just KPNL radio, which you can find on, again, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. There's uh, groups for both of those on Facebook. So there's a page and a group. My book is called uh, Aperture in the Veil, Born in a Preternatural World. That can be found on Amazon. I also am selling uh, author signed copies. If you find me on Facebook under Anne Celine, just, you know, send me a friend request, but let me know why. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, uh, well, you know, I can, I can give you a, an author signed copy that way. Um, gosh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. I think that's it. There we go. Well, thank you so much, Lady Anne. I had a great time, and I hope you have an awesome time on your trip. Oh, thank you guys so much. Seriously, this has been amazing. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't leave yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have questions about today's episode, or if you'd like to reach out to us directly, you can do so by sending us an email at creepyunsolvedmedia at gmail.com. Until next time, be sure to check out our awesome content by simply visiting creepyunsolved.com. If you are active on YouTube, be sure to check out our channel over there under the name Creepy Unsolved. Also, while you wait for the next episode of Creepy Unsolved, be sure to leave us a rating and review. This will help our podcast grow. Until next time, this is Dylan signing off.